I really can't believe how much I love this watch. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Cam to another review. If you like the channel so far and the content we produce, subscribe and leave a like. Today we're going to talk about the Parmigiani Fleurier Tondograph watch, a watch you probably never expected to see on this channel. So Parmigiani Fleurier is based in Fleurier, which is in Neuchâtel. In Neuchâtel you have also Le Locle and Le Chatfond. Those are, you know, watchmaking hubs and really devoted to high-end complications and all kinds of, you know, mechanical creations. Michel Parmigiani founded the brand and they are situated in Fleurier, hence the name Parmigiani Fleurier. Michel Parmigiani is a master watchmaker and is most known for his skills in restoring old timepieces and also automatons. That's why we have a little clock here as well on the table in the spirit of Michel Parmigiani. The spirit of restoration is still something they practice and again it's at the core of the brand. By restoring high complicated watches from the past you learn a lot and you also get inspired to create something for the future. When the quartz crisis hit Switzerland, Michel Parmigiani didn't go with the flow. He actually continued restoring old watches and clocks and actually took over the collection of the Sandoz Foundation. What's also very impressive is that the Patek Philippe Museum actually gave Michel Parmigiani the approval or the, you know, the trust to restore their clocks in their museum. Michel Parmigiani started his company in 1996 and his goal was always to create high-end timepieces with a very unique appeal and also for his special clients. One of Mr. Parmigiani's passions is to create automatons which are inspired by animals. One of my favorite watches from Parmigiani Florier is the Ovale Pantograph. If you know, it's the watch with a very specific set of hands which extract and retract once they pass the 3 and the 9 o'clock position. The model I'm reviewing today is not something from the past, but something for the future. It features one of my favorite complications, which is the chronograph and also a tourbillon. The first tondograph was introduced in 2009 and today here we have the 2013 version, which looks a bit differently. When you look at this watch, it's very distinct. You have a big set of lugs, an open worked dial and a beautiful tourbillon, you know, running around there at 6 o'clock. Breaking down the dial, you can see we have a lot of levels here and also different types of finishing. Because this watch has a manual winding movement, it has 65 hours power reserve. And if you want to know when your watch is low on power, you just check out the indicator here at 12 o'clock. As you see, there's also a long seconds hand now running here with the Parmigiani Fleurier logo at the tip of it. This is actually the chronograph seconds hand, which I activated beforehand. At 3 o'clock, you have the 30 minute chronograph sub dial. And at 9 o'clock you have the seconds indication for the time. Below the sub dial you have Perlage and also across the whole open worked dial you have Cote de Genève decoration, which I really love. On the outer ring of the dial you can see you have the tachymeter scale to measure the speed and also the indexes which are applied as well as the hands have Luminova on them. At 6 o'clock you have a 1 minute tourbillon which is beautifully polished and is protected by this beautifully mirror polished bridge above it. Having Cote de Genève on the dial is really cool. Usually Cote de Genève decoration is applied on the back side of the movement. So when you twist the watch around here and you know the light hits it a bit differently, it's super cool to see and to watch. Turning the watch around now I'm going to show you my favorite part of this movement. And yes, you know, although the dial is really impressive to look at, the case pack, in my opinion, is even better. So once you turn the case around, something you also might notice is the very special lugs. The lugs are bent down, let's say almost uh, teardrop shaped, and this design language also translates into the buckle here. So you can see the lugs and the buckle have the same style. You can see that the back of this watch is also the business end of the watch. It features a column wheel chronograph with a total of 298 components. All of them are beautifully decorated. You see a few different decoration styles here. Perlage on the bottom part, Cote de Genève on the upper bridges, and also you have Anglage, so you can see the edges are beautifully rounded. All the screws and also some components are mirror polished. As we are used to seeing in high-end chronographs, they all have a column wheel. 
The column wheel, which you can find here, is also mirror polished, which I imagine is really hard to do. As somebody who really likes high-end movements and also, you know, having an open case pack, you have the pleasure of playing with light. So once you twist it a bit around, you can see how the, you know, different light hits it. Another pleasure of having, you know, open case pack and a beautiful chronograph like this is that once you press the pushers, you can actually see how it moves. So you push the two o'clock pusher to activate and, you know, deactivate the chronograph and you can push the other one at four o'clock to basically activate the flyback function and then you will see the gears moving here. Let me now put the watch on the wrist so you guys can see how it fits me. Like I explained before, the lugs are bent down, which means the comfort is better. This watch also features a very wide leather strap and the strap manufacturer of Parmigiani is actually Hermes. As you can see, the watch has a tank buckle in 18 karat rose gold with the Parmigiani logo on it. And once I turn it around, you can actually notice that the watch is uh, on the higher side. The watch is 13.3 millimeters high and 43 millimeters in diameter. I have a 18.1 centimeter wrist size, which means I can wear this watch with no problem. If you have a smaller wrist, the watch might be too big. It's not a light watch. It's made out of full 18 karat rose gold. So it is more on the heavy side, but because the lugs are bent down and the strap is very nice and thin, it's actually more comfortable than you would think. For everybody wondering what a beautiful timepiece like this costs, the new model actually costs 199,000 Swiss francs. If you want to know more about this particular model in the video, check out the link in the description. I want to know what you think about Parmigiani 30 watches and if you've known this model before. On the side, we have a photo of a watch you'll be reviewing next time on the channel. It's actually my latest acquisition and I'm really happy about it. If you know which model or watch this is, leave a comment down below. There's no awards for guessing it right this time. I hope you liked the review and I'll see you next time.